Hello, and welcome to another week of worship. What a crazy few weeks we've had, and especially me. I mean, I'm finally over coronavirus. Our family is, is doing well. Uh, it was a long journey, but it feels good to feel good again. Um, I want to invite you to sing along and worship as we sing these songs. God of justice, love and mercy, pour your wisdom on our souls by your all-sustaining power. Keep our spirit strong and whole. Lift our eyes to see your vision of a us courage then to follow bringing comfort with each deed oh god of justice love and mercy with compassion let us care to share Press our hearts to know the struggle of the ones we cannot see Brother, sister all who suffer may our kindness set them free God of justice, love and mercy, send us out and make us whole as we strive for your high calling. Let our hands of your mercies hold. You have blessed us with abundance, gifts to share. Son and Holy Spirit, may we follow as you lead. So this week we celebrate. Dr. Martin Luther King and everything he did for our country. And again, his words seem to be so necessary and we need to hear them again and again. In one of his sermons that he gave, he talked about us moving on from certain mountains that we get stuck at. And the idea is we have to keep moving on. Jesus is calling us to keep moving forward to keep moving and he says you have to fly but if you can't fly then run and if you can't run then walk and if you can't walk then crawl but by all means keep moving on We have stood in the darkness And evil sang its song Fear has made us captive To pain we've known so long But no lie can live forever And truth will rise again In the weight of the struggle 
freedom we will stand if we keep moving on moving on we must keep moving on though the mountains in our way we've been here too long we must keep Love gives strength and power to the weary and the weak. And though you may grow tired, oh, the Lord will be your strength. Oh, justice and forgiveness will lead us by the hand. We shall overcome and see the promised land if we keep moving on moving on we must keep moving on though the mountains in our way we've been here too long we must keep moving on If you can't fly, then run And if you can't run, then walk And if you can't walk, then crawl But keep moving on And if you can't fly, then run And if you can't run, then walk And if you can't walk, then crawl But keep moving and if you can't fly, then run. And if you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But keep moving on. We must keep moving on. No, moving on. We must keep moving on. Though the Must keep moving on, moving on, moving on. Should nothing of our efforts stand? No less he survived Unless the Lord does raise the house in vain Its builders strive To you boast tomorrow's gain Tell me what is your life amidst that vanishes at dawn? All glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ, our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. His will be done. Let live 
you to pray with me. Lord God, we pray for our nation this day, for all in the medical and the research community who labor so faithfully and sacrificially to fight against the scourge of the coronavirus pandemic. Bless and strengthen and protect them and their families, Lord, we pray. Oh Lord, our personal liberty and our personal responsibility have broken apart and people are dying in that gap because we do not practically love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, and refashion liberty and responsibility back together for your glory and for our good. God sent us wisdom and tenacity to overcome injustice and write in the American story a new chapter of equality, of liberty and justice, truly for all. God, send provision to all those harshly struck down by job loss or business loss of economic confusion or scarcity. God, we pray you send provision. Lord, bless the inauguration of our new president and vice president this week. Lift up into the light the principles of our Constitution and show the world the gem of democracy, the peaceful transfer of power and authority from one administration to the next. Strengthen our stewardship of this nation and of our neighbors, we pray. Lord, forgive our sin, all of it. The taste of its toxicity has turned our stomach. We hunger for justice, we thirst for righteousness. Help us, Lord Jesus, by your mercy and forgive. Lord, we pray in thanksgiving for the life of our sister in Christ, Eve Rule, who now enjoys eternal life with you. Thank you for Eve's example of prayer that 
lays hold of your promises. And God, we marvel that she, born a Jew, found Jesus as her Savior and Messiah and shined her light through early widowhood and single motherhood while uh, leading her own business to supply their needs. God, we bless her. And in the footsteps of Eve, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Gathering at the Capitol, Washington, D.C. In August of 1963, there was a gathering at the Capitol. 250,000 people in the March on Washington for freedom and for jobs was that gathering at the Capitol. And Dr. Martin Luther King stood on the steps and declared the dream he had, God's dream for America. He was the Christian pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And as he declared God's heart for America, he had been doing it for years in sermons and in legislation, in protest marches, and even going to jail repeatedly for speaking out against injustice. But that gathering at the Capitol in August of 1963 was the pinnacle of his servant leadership, calling our nation and our leaders to do right. That's the reason why this weekend, every third weekend in January, we remember and recommit ourselves because there was a gathering at the Capitol that day. In a few days' time, on January 20th, there will be a gathering at the Capitol. The inauguration of our new president and vice president, with millions of Americans and billions of those around the world watching, the jewel of democracy will take place. That peaceful transfer of power from one administration to the next. Yeah. There will be a gathering at the Capitol. But you know, a few days ago, there was another gathering at the Capitol. Not a good gathering. Incited by their leaders to direct their anger against Congress, who at that time was ceremoniously counting the electoral votes that determined the election outcome. That gathering surged up the Capitol steps and broke into the People's House to disrupt and desecrate democracy. Yes, there was a gathering at the Capitol. Every gathering at the Capitol has leaders. What kind of leader listens to godly wisdom? Leadership. There are many skills that can be put into your toolbox on leadership, and that's good. There are many priorities and checklists about how to lead your family your city, your country. But I believe that what should be in the heart of every leader is found in God's Word, the Bible. And Solomon, king of Israel, in chapter 29 of the book of Proverbs, shares godly wisdom for leaders. Now, his government was a kingdom 
not a democracy, but this godly wisdom is needed by every leader. Let me read them from Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. Verse 4, a just king gives stability to his nation, but one who demands bribes destroys it. Verse 7, the godly care about the rights of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. Verse 8, mockers can get a whole town agitated, but the wise will calm anger. Verse 12, if a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. Verse 14, if a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. Verse 16, when the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. In verse 26, many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. I think the summary of godly wisdom from Proverbs 29 for leaders is that selfish leadership destroys, but servant leadership is God's wisdom for leaders of family, of city, of country. I'm going to tell you two Bible stories. One showing the disaster when one in authority is a selfish leader. And the second one, which is redemption when one in authority is a servant leader. The first story is about Rehoboam, who was King Solomon's son. We read about it in 1 Kings chapter 12. When King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam called a gathering at the capital to receive the pledges of allegiance from all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Now, the northern 10 tribes bring him one request. Will you lighten the load of labor that your father Solomon put upon us and restrain the lash of forced conscription to build your palace? And we will be loyal to you, Rehoboam, if you lighten the load and restrain the lash. Rehoboam said, come back in three days and I'll give you my answer. Now he first went to his older counselors for advice and they said in verse 17, if you, Rehoboam, are willing to be a servant leader, yes, that's the phrase they used, a servant leader to these people today, they will always be your loyal subjects. Hmm, Rehoboam said. Let me get a second opinion. So he asked then his buddies that he grew up with, it's very clear, his yes men, his sycophants, his posse, and they said, well tell those complainers, you think my dad put a heavy load on you and drove you with the lash? I'll put a 10-ton load on you and drive you with scorpions. And that is the counsel Rehoboam took. The son of Solomon, who had put his servant leader manual of wisdom of Proverbs 29 right in front of Rehoboam's eyes. But Rehoboam did selfish leadership. And all ten tribes of northern Israel rebelled on the spot. That gathering of the capital turned into insurrection and treason. Rejecting godly wisdom to be a servant leader is disastrous for your family or your city or your country. Rehoboam's fatal choice triggered a disastrous decline in Israel. Two things happened. Morality went down. Security got weak. Morality 
the northern tribes started setting up counterfeit worship places with golden calves as idols. There was injustice against the poor, both north and south. The marginalized were abused. Those without power were kicked to the curb. Morality tanked. And security of the nation was compromised. Instead of one strong, unified nation, who was the supreme power at that time in the region, Israel and Judah became two half-pint nations fighting against each other. They became easy prey for the enemy nations of Assyria and Babylon who conquered and carried off all the people to exile. What started this downward death spiral? Selfish leadership did at the gathering of the capital that day. You know, the people of every country, every city, every family have a choice. Selfish leadership or servant leadership. What kind of leader will you be? What kind of leader will you follow? Years later, years later, there was one more gathering at the Capitol that looked like a disaster, but God turned it strangely redemptive. Jesus of Nazareth had called 12 disciples, recalling the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples to be his team, and he taught and he trained them to preach the gospel, the good news, to heal people of sicknesses, and to cast out evil. But when two of the 12, the brothers James and John, sidled up to Jesus asking for what really was a political favor to be his top two lieutenants in the coming kingdom, to be selfish leaders, in other words, when the other 10 disciples got wind of it, they were indignant. And Jesus sat them all down and said in Matthew 20, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it must be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. For even I came not to be served, but to serve others and give my life as a ransom for many. Selfish leaders squander their people's trust and energy and wealth. But servant leaders ransom their people. They invest their time, their skills, their resources into their people. They willingly pay out of themselves the cost of servant leadership. They ransom their people out of captivity, leverage them up from failure and lead them forward into flourishing. Jesus's last week of life was spent at Passover, the great gathering at the capital, Jerusalem. Jesus and his 12 joined thousands who flooded into the city to rich ritually remember God's great deliverance of their nation. Years ago from slavery in Egypt, they took their Passover lamb to the temple for sacrifice. They roasted it over an open fire while eating flatbread and drinking wine. In both their posture and their prayers, they united themselves again to God's mighty act of deliverance. Jesus' words to them, those 12 that night, was not a bombastic speech of a selfish leader. His words were servant leader words. This bread and wine show my body will be broken, my, my blood will be shed. 
for the forgiveness of sin, to establish God's new covenant with us, a covenant of redemption. Well, meanwhile, a rougher, evil gathering was forming in the capital. The religious and political leaders who rejected Jesus bribed Judas's betrayal to arrest Jesus by night, judge him in secret until finally bound and beaten. He stood on the capital steps as the gathering, the mob, yelled for his death. Jesus died and was buried. What a disaster of a gathering at the Capitol when selfish leadership and servant leadership collided at the cross. And yet, God can redeem the disasters. God can reroute the death spirals. God can raise once again God's dream for humanity. Jesus rose from the dead and fills his followers with faith so strong we can be the servant leaders that are sorely needed at this moment. We can be God's instrument to ransom our people out of all kinds of captivity. And you can be God's instrument to leverage people up from failure and lead them forward into flourishing. This is God's dream for you. Make your choice. Selfish leadership or servant leadership. Let's pray. Dear God, make me a servant leader for your glory and the good of my family, my city, my country. In Jesus' name, amen. When I think of servant leadership and leading in the way of Jesus, my prayer is simply this. It's the same as, it's an old Celtic prayer where it says, Christ be with me. Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ below me, Christ above me. Christ be with me on my left and on my right, where I come and where I go. Let everything be Christ. And that's how I can lead a life of Christ-centered leadership or servant leadership. So this song is simply this prayer, this old Celtic prayer by St. Patrick. Christ be with me. Christ. 
taste in the mouth of